beeping a lot? Oh my god. Can they see me? Uh, try muting it, try muting it. Oh my god, he's so nice. Okay. Oh, well, it's beeping a lot. Can I unplug this, unplug it? You wanna do that? Can you guys hear us? Yeah. You guys can hear us? second year in the competition um, so this is our banner right here from last year uh, we're gonna have a different logo um, yeah we got BB-8 right there in the middle on the table that's our BB-8 robot um, my name is Faraz I'm one of the programming uh, one of the kids in the pro programming team so if you want to just like want to introduce all of us or um, all right so uh, we've been having meetings today and yesterday um, and so we kind of like divide it up into groups. So like there's a programming team, there's a marketing team and things like that. Um, so the programming team, we've been working with like a test robot. Um, it's, it's not the full thing because we haven't built it yet, obviously, but it's a small test robot for the motion. So we can test out motors and the wheels. Uh, right now we're using mechanum wheels. We don't think we're going to use those in the actual robot. Um, so we're working on... Um, you know, so we have the joystick moving around, and we can get it controlling things, and we're working on the wiring a little bit. So, wait, wait. There's a Pittsburgh. Can you bring that Pittsburgh fan back into the screen, please? <laughs> can you see me? I don't know if you can see me. Yeah. Hey, yeah. how's it going, compadre? Hey, thanks so much. This is awesome. For those people that don't know, uh, we were together for a couple weeks building and designing things. So, thanks so much for inviting us to. To collaborate, you, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. We like talking to you guys, so I'm glad you guys are available to chat with us today. Awesome. So uh, let's get it started. Let them run, and we're just going to go in the back here. So thank you. Who wants to go first? All right. Who wants to go first? Any questions? Um, Maxine, didn't we have some questions for programming? What do you think? Um, the center. Okay. Yeah. Um. So we we wanted to ask you guys some questions about. Um, sensors and stuff. Um, what kind of sensors are you planning on using in your robot? Like, are you using any distance sensors or speed speedometers or anything like that? We, we tend to use encoders on, on most motors okay. for sensing the speed. Someone writing this down? No, we're recording. Encoders, encoders on the speed, okay. And, uh, and uh, as far as sensors, we, we usually don't use things like piezoelectric distance sensors. Mm -hmm. Although we, we've thought about using it in the past, and we tried and we tested them out, um, we usually don't do that. The most important sensor you're going to find, especially this year, will be uh, a camera on board. And we can find it. Right. Oh, like for shooting the hoop things? Well, we're, we're just, yeah. just moving around. Yeah. You're not going to have visibility 
right. to the center of the field in most cases. All right. The width they've, they've, they've designed most of the most of the um, hazards, you're not going to be able to see what your robot is doing. Right. You need to have a first person view on the robot to be relayed to the driver so that they can see what's going on. Yeah. All right. We used a camera last year and yeah, it, it helped us a lot. So. Right now, we're, we're, we're planning on using two cameras on board. Um, why two? That's a good idea. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. We can't hear that, sorry. Sorry, we... we... Uh, one is going to be for shooting, it's going to be for aligning to target, and the other one... And that one, that one's not going to be a normal view camera, it's going... We're going to modify one of the, the Microsoft ones to pull the IR filter out, and we're going to use an infrared only filter on it with an infrared illuminator. We did that uh, back in 2012. Uh, and what you can do is you can track the vision targets. You notice whenever they show the kickoff, they have tape that's going around. Yeah, the yeah. Hole. Yeah, like on the crate size here, yeah. Yeah, so if you use an infrared illuminator and an infrared filter with a camera that can see infrared, you'll get essentially a black and white picture that will only be that retro reflective tape. So it's really easy to process the vision on that because it's essentially a two-bit field. And, and uh, you, can, you can use that for distance, and, and you can use it for aiming. Okay. And how, how are you guys going to manage, how do you guys manage the bandwidth of the two cameras? Because last year we actually had issues with just one camera going over to 7 megabits. Um, we can't hear you. It sounds like the AC is on or something. There we go. Trust me, they're trying to freeze us out. Yeah, don't worry, it's like 50 degrees in here, so it's not us. But, yeah, the key to using the two cameras on this one is that the one camera is all processed on board. So it's not sending data back. It's doing automatic adjustment to speed and... In 2012, they used a Lazy Susan, so they had almost a 360 uh, aiming ability with shooting the basketballs. This year, they're not planning that much, but that onboard camera processes and basically constantly keeps the turret aimed at the target the whole time the robot's driving around without the drivers having to do anything. So is that like a thing in your program that would uh, regulate that? Yeah, no, 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 what's really important about that is you, you've got to pay attention to, okay, you're talking about bandwidth, right? Um, yeah. You have to configure the cameras to, to reduce your bit depth. So, for example, like, look, the, the little Microsoft cameras, those are 720p, which is pretty high resolution. They're using H60, H.264, which does pretty good compression. But the thing is, you can tell it to, to vary the quality. So you can have it compress more or have it uh, do less colors. And, and the more you simplify it, like if you go to grayscale instead of instead of uh, an RGBA, uh, you have one quarter of the data uh, coming through. If you drop it the whole way down to black and white, it, it's it's almost nothing coming through. If you want to process it on board on your laptop, laptops are strong compared to what's on board. Uh, we're looking we're looking to use. Uh, if you look in first choice, they have an NVIDIA TK1 which is a little single board computer that, that NVIDIA put out. Uh, it uses uh, uh, OpenCV with C++. You can do onboard vision processing with that. Also, this year, this year's LabVIEW kit, they have a, a system called GRIP that uses OpenCV, which is open computer vision. Uh, so you can, you can essentially use that camera on the laptop to figure out what kind of processing you need to simplify your picture to analyze. And, and you can essentially use that to generate code that you can put on the single board computer. Okay. Yeah. You guys are using LabVIEW then? Yes. Okay, we're using Java. Yeah. Um, um, why, why particularly LabVIEW? Is it just for like the data processing that you're using it, or? Uh, there's a couple things. Uh, when you, when you, I'm sorry, talk to me. Use LabVIEW. Uh, you have to understand that National Instruments makes the Robo Rio. The software libraries for LabVIEW are typically about a year ahead of the libraries for C++ and Java. Java follows C++ because it's a wrapper on the, the C++ libraries. 
So, so the thing is, uh, you know, I don't even uh, a lot of computer vision stuff doesn't exist on Java. Okay. You know, okay, so you have to offload it to the, to the dashboard. Um, the other thing is, we're we're a national instruments team. We're going to be using LabVIEW. Uh, some teams turn their nose up against it, but you know, one of the teams that won last year in Einstein used our code, our LabVIEW code, for their drive system. So it could be done. Okay. Um, do you want to take um, there's a question uh, that came up with, uh, yeah, okay, with our Wi-Fi. We were having connectivity issues, and um, on Chief Delphi, we found a thread that said that this year's radio has to be mounted horizontally because of the way it emits radio waves. Do you, have you guys had any experience with that? We haven't even bothered with that yet. Okay. We haven't looked at that yet. Um, you know, the other thing about it, you have to pay attention when you're doing it, or that you, if you're going to have, you're going to be mine. Are you guys using metal? You're using aluminum for your robot? Yeah. Okay. The aluminum will block certain radio waves you know, in certain directions, so you have to be paying attention to that. Um, you know, we, we tend to make ours out of fiberglass, which is radio transparent, so we don't usually have any issues whatsoever, so it's a low priority for us to investigate. Okay. So, um, this, this producing with fiberglass add, like, um, a lot of, is it more complicated than aluminum? You have to plan more. Huh? You have to plan more. Mm. Um, and, and the, the, the issue with, with, uh, fiberglass, well, here, uh, who wants to talk about fiberglass? So, uh, the thing with fiberglass is we kind of use, have to use a lot of it, basically, and you have to make the mold. A lot of times that takes a lot of time because you have to cat it up and get all your dimensions correct and decide what you're going to do and what you're going to do it. And a lot of times it can be time consuming, but I mean, it kind of, it works out for us most of the time because you can make it into a lot more different um, configurations as far as where wheels are going and stuff like that. Where, um, I mean, it, I don't know, that's pretty much it. It's also pretty indestructible. Yeah, you can okay. stand on it and it will never break. Okay. Part of the thing with fiberglass is that you really do have to plan it out first. So these guys right now, I've got people specifically working in 3D modeling, and they're putting the wheels and the motors and every little component in there so they can make sure that when they do the fiberglass body, it's ready for all those parts to be added. You know, I'm sure you guys never do this, but in science class when you do an experiment, and you kind of don't write the hypothesis until you see how the experiment came out, that's kind of like working with metal, right? You can kind of like fudge things around and add plates where you need and, and drill extra holes because things don't fit right. Fiberglass, they have to do all the planning ahead of time. So it takes a little bit longer, but then once the base is made, all the drawings are already made and they're just plugging everything in. And you never have short issues. And you never have short issues where you accidentally ground the component. Are you talking about the housing or the actual outside structure when you're talking about fiberglassing? The housing of the uh, of the electronics is all you're talking about, right? Our entire robot's made Fiberglass? Yeah. Wow, so you're thinking if the frame itself is is made out of aluminum, that's where there might be some interference? Is that the, is that the thought? Yeah, if, if the entire frame is made out of aluminum, you can get radio signal interference. It's like a Faraday's cage in a sense. Yeah. Okay. okay, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Anything else? Hey, for us, get a direct on for us. I don't know. I get direct I already asked. Okay. All right, close it. No, 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 wait. Let's see. What? They're going to show you guys the robot now. Oh, yes. Oh, they are? They're getting the robot. Okay. Jerome, Jerome. We're not, aren't they like into buttons? Oh yeah, Danielle, ask them. Ask them questions. Oh yeah, go. Go ahead, Danielle. Go ahead. 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 Go ahead.
you're like famous for your buttons. I was wondering like where you got them.
yeah, everything needs to be tested on your own stuff, you know, and everything needs to be taken with a grain of salt in your own life. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we were also wondering about bumpers, since, well, this would be our first year building bumpers. How do you guys do your mount for the bumpers, especially since uh, we have to have both colors and, uh, and the interchange them? And the material to make we and materials. <laughs> so, some teams you'll see running around with two sets of bumpers. Where they, they've made a red set, they've made a blue set. Uh, the past couple of years, we did a bumper cover where we'll set the standard cover for the, we'll set one color as default, and then we'll have this cute little shower cap kind of thing that we put on top of it to beat the other color. The important thing is, once your bumpers are on, after you've passed inspection, you don't have to take them on and off again if you do the bumper cover. So, once you've got everything together, it can be difficult to put bumpers on and off. So, we did the bumper cover thing to save time on putting bumpers on. Mm -hmm. um, what we do with the bumpers, and I think they're bringing hardware to show you. They're bringing you a robot to show you. Wow, messy, messy. we kind of melt um, with this little screw right here. We have a whole bunch of these all around the inside of the circle. And it uses, it's, if I can line it up. There you go. It's just a simple little push, twist type thing. Tightens it on. I'm waiting to get it. At McMastercar.com. And then there's a trick with those, right? They, um, uh, so this one is button activated briefly uh, if the button's pushed or not or something like that. They're really, there we go, they're really nice because you can hand turn them. They are a little expensive, but you don't want to waste them. So there's always the challenge though. With this robot, what we did was we lined up the holes with the bumper and we made this screw through the robot into the bumper. But then you have challenges of making sure your thread not cross threaded. On other robots, um, you make the screw come out, out of the bumper, and then you just have to line up your hole into the body of the robot, push the screw through, and put a nut on it on the inside. But with this being round, we needed to do it this way, way where they went in instead of sticking out. Uh, I'll go get you a piece of hardware to show you how they talk to you about other things. Okay, we got one question coming up, guys. What's up? Uh, so for are we good? Okay. So for pneumatics, I was told that the maximum operating pressure is 60 psi, and that it really wouldn't be viable for anything like this sort of game. Uh, what's what's your take on that? Uh, it's almost uh, about this one. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have the yoga ball. How high? So, so on this robot, on this robot here, um, we have pneumatics hooked up to this, which was like a catapult during the game two years ago, and it launched a big yoga ball, okay. like ten feet. Ten oh, feet. Okay. 10 or 15 feet, and this is at 60 psi, so it, it'll it work pretty well. Like, I think it launched it 10 feet up and 15 feet across or something. Went pretty far. Yeah. Went to the goal. With, you know, with the, the thing about the kitchen pneumatics, though, is if you're going to do that, you have to really, really uh, do a lot of work to figure it out. Uh, we spent about a, a day and a half 
just to get the kinematics right. And then there was a lot of uh, hope and praying. <laughs> yeah, because we really don't know what we're doing, like, pneumatics-wise, so it sort of discourages us, discourages us to go in that direction. So, yeah. Don't, don't discourage it. It solves a lot of problems, though. Yeah. So this is the amount of hardware that we use for this. And um, it basically, it works really well. It just sticks through the fiberglass and it threads on because we have the bolts sticking out of the bumpers. Hey, um, unless they all just like sit still, still like that. that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Guys, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. I just can't see, can't see you. Hello. Hello the camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're getting there. Ah, perfect. Perfect. in the bumpers. I'll so, it up. Yeah, if you can. Uh, so that the bolts go through the housing uh, and then what would happen, go show them the, go show them the nut version. No, no. Okay. No, no, the one that's out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, I get how it works. Okay, so, so since we have that, but we also have those other types that, that go through from the inside out. Um, six and one half dozen of another, but the thing is if you're going to do something like a curved bumper, you need to have slots. You know, and it's a good idea to have adjustment slots anyway, even if you're using square bumpers, because you never, you, you never know. You have only a minute to attach your bumpers, so you, you want to be really quick with it. Uh, yeah, uh, and if you don't put them on the perfect, like perfect way, then you're screwed. So it's better to have like a little room for adjustment, which is nice. Right. <laughs> Typically, we'll number our, our bumpers and, and the location of where they go, even if we have a lot of symmetry, just to make sure that we don't misapply them. Yeah, especially a lot can happen in a minute. A lot can go wrong, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one. These bumper chunks that we have are held on by two fasteners. So, uh, depending on how good or bad you are at, at uh, mechanical inclination, they can come up really quick or for rip. That's why we had the nice. Be because, because it takes so long to do this, what we did is we had covers flipped over that have elastic on the back side to tuck in and Velcro. Yeah, that's a good idea. Push it straight on. Was it third one? Oh, you know what? Did it, uh, uh, okay. Uh, what, what are the things? What are the things you guys? Uh, anyone else have any questions? Any other questions? I think yeah, let me let me talk to them real quickly. Um, D Danielle, hi. This is Dean Morell. Um, I I wanted to, uh, on behalf of the BB Raiders, I wanted to uh, thank you and your team for uh, helping us this morning. Uh, we appreciate the advice. And guys, can I tell you something? This advice has been absolutely invaluable. Um, the, the, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking and we're discussing right now different directions that we want to go as a result of speaking with you. But my, my final question to you is this. If one of our students here from the BB Raiders wants to get in contact with the student leaders from your team 
Is that possible? And if so, how would you prefer that we communicate with you via Twitter, Skype, email, chat? What do you prefer? So I'm Jesse. I'm the president of the team. Um, Hi, if you want to contact me, they can text me or email me. I can give you guys my information. Yes. Okay, yes, please. Uh, here's Daniela. She's going to jot down your info, okay? Uh, by the way, um, we, we're recording this uh, Skype session, and we're going to post it on our Twitter feed, and then I will send to Danielle the link to, the, uh, to our Twitter uh, account, okay, so you can see the Skype session. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, go ahead, Danielle. Jot it down. I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Go ahead, Danielle. Six, six. Five, 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 seven. It's 661-221-0883. All right, yeah, we got it. Thank you. What's the email? Oh, that's it? Okay, yeah. My email is J-E-S-S-Y-E-A-H-A-Y-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Okay, great. Sure, you let them know that you're the main contact with us. Oh, actually, I'm the main contactor. Contact, contactor. Um, my name is Daniela, so, yes. I'll send you an email and a text, don't worry. Alright. Okay. Uh, and you're looking to go to something else? That's a very good thing to do. Don't want to do piano this year. We like piano, we like omnidirectional stuff. But, but this, this year's challenge is not made for that at all. Oh, okay. Not made for mechanum or omni wheels. That's what you're saying. Yeah, we had we had rolled it out because we had, we made like a little practice spot over the over the break. Yeah, we, we made like a little practice robot during our winter break, and we tried it out with mechanum, and we saw that it had a lot of limitations. So we ruled out mechanum right away. Okay, good. Yeah, I was gonna say you gotta pay attention to the, the way they designed some of the uh, the hazards. They're, they're designed to catch certain wheels right. or, or or other. You know, so just you know, the, this year the game is designed to really equalize all the teams. Uh, because if you look, you can only hold one boulder at a time. You have you can't shoot it from one zone to another. You have to carry it from one zone to another over an obstacle of some sort. Right. So, you take a look at that, it, it, I mean, there will be teams that will still be crazy, but, but they're going to be very much hindered by this game. Right, right. Yeah. So it, 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 it levels the playing field for all teams. Yeah, because when, when we went to the regional in Fort Lauderdale last year, we noticed that there were two main um, classes of robots, the, the extremely awesome ones that would get a lot of points in autonomous, and then the ones that really didn't do anything in autonomous that we're kind of running so-so, you know? We wanted to try to compete in something that has more, um, you know, diversity in that respect. Thanks. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, you? We will be in contact with you, and uh, uh, Daniela will be in contact with, uh, with your students, and uh, we, we hope to uh, Skype with you real soon, okay? Awesome. Thanks for showing okay. us all the robots, by the way. And, and thank, you for, thank you for showing us all the robots that you've done over the years. Wait, wh where's your region this year? Where are you guys going for this region? Where's your regional? We're doing the same ones we did last year. We're going to Central Valley, which is in uh, Fresno area. I was worried about it being kind of boring, but it's actually a great regional. We got people down from Silicon Valley, oh, all wow. over California, and the school is an awesome school site. It's built 3,500 kids. They have two gymnasiums, so we did set up and all the pits in one gym and all the competition was in the other. So we really liked that one, so we're doing it again. Cool. And we're going back to Vegas because we always do Vegas. Oh, yeah. Everyone should do Vegas. Right. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.